No matter if you call it soccer or football, it's by far the world's most popular sport with millions of viewers tuning in to see each game. And ESPN, the world's largest sports network, is looking to tap into that football market by launching a new channel right here in the United Kingdom. Russell Wolf is the executive vice president and managing director of ESPN International. He joins me now. It, sir, a lot of anticipation about this Saturday. It's when uh, you just secured the broadcast right to the Premier League. That's the world's most popular football league for those watching back in the States. Uh, what do you expect out of this particular market? You know, the UK is a great television market, and we're excited to be adding another channel to our stable of channels here. We launched e the new channel ESPN on August 3rd to join ESPN Classic and ESPN America, both of which were already in the market. And we're looking forward to the kickoff on Saturday of our first ever live Premier League match. What we're hoping for is a great season for football fans here in the UK. Mm -hmm. well, what's your expectation in, in terms of viewership? I mean, to put in perspective, if you would, those viewers who aren't here in London, put into perspective how big this market, how big this opportunity is. You know, there's over 13 million people who receive pay television here in, in the United Kingdom, and they're very keen sports fans who are excited every week to tune in and watch their clubs play football, or as we call it in America, soccer. And so we're expecting, you know, excited and large audiences throughout the season. And over the four years of our deal, we expect millions of people to tune in to ESPN. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a four-year deal for you to broadcast the Premier League matches. Um, but the, one of the criticisms has been that, you know, the network has the rights to only half the number of games in the second season than you do in the first. So uh, can you explain that to us and, and how you expect to uh, sort of uh, break even or potentially be seeing some gains on the investment that you're making here and buying these rights? Yeah, I mean, we're excited about the overall investment at ESPN and at the Walt Disney Company, and we believe that, you know, in getting the best product in a market where this product is the most relevant, the most important sports product in the market, even though we're starting with 46 matches this season and we'll drop down to 23 matches for the next three seasons, which is really all that was available from the Premier League, you know, under the deal that we stepped into after another um, broadcaster went out of business. We believe we've got a sound business model that we paid, you know, rights fees that are appropriate and disciplined. And, you know, we've done this, we've launched 45 networks around the world prior to launching this network outside the United States, and we're confident that the plan we have in place will both deliver sports fans great, great product and deliver a good business back to the company. Now, ESPN is, uh, as you indicated, 80% owned by the Disney companies. What has been the reaction of having a, an American icon in the business world make a step uh, into the football market, which is, you know, uh, virtually a religion in the UK? You know, it's a, it's a great question, and we've been we've been handling it, I think, with a lot of uh, with a lot of um, focus because we have football aficionados throughout our company. We've been broadcasting football, including the World Cup in Brazil, for many years. We've had the World Cup in the United States. We've done the UEFA Champions League around Asia for the last 15 years, and so we have lots of football experts and aficionados and pros within our company. And what we've done is we've gone out and hired a great team of talent, including Ray Stubbs, who's a 20-plus year veteran with the BBC, to be our front man for our coverage here in, in England. And we think, you know, we will treat this product with the same level of focus and attention and care as the sports fans that we are as we've treated cricket in India, as we've treated rugby in Argentina, and as we've treated ice hockey through our joint venture called TSN in Canada. You know, we, our, our mission statement at ESPN is to focus and serve sports fans, and we'll serve the sports fans here in England and the United Kingdom with the same focus and attention that we've done everywhere else in the world we've gone, including the way we've done in the United States. Mm -hmm. And this first match that we're talking about uh, on the 15th of August, this Saturday, Everton versus Arsenal at Goodison Park. It's going to be broadcast on ESPN uh, International here. Can you give us a sense of what the feel is going to be if someone flips over and looks at ESPN in the U.S.? Is the layout going to be the same? Are the graphics going to be very similar? What's the look and feel? You know, the look and feel that we'll have in our studio here in the U.K. is, 
is a studio that we've built in the last six weeks. You know, we only we only got this deal eight weeks ago to broadcast these matches for the next four years. So everything's wow. been done. It's been our it's been our fastest launch in the history of uh, of our international business. And so this, we're excited about the studio and the studio show and the talent we have. It'll have a really good um, energy to the team we have both in the studio and some of our talent like Rebecca Lowe, who will have up at the ground at Goodison Park. And I think you'll you'll find that we bring the same kind of level of excitement to this broadcast um, in England that we bring to Monday Night Football fans, you know, with the NFL in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, and just quickly before we go, there, there are reports out there, I know you're not going to talk about how much you paid uh, for the broadcasting rights, but there are reports out there saying that the fee was between $147 million for the first season, 260 million for the following three. Are those reports somewhat around uh, reality? You know, Margaret, I'm sorry, I can't comment on the, on the rights fees we pay. It's just a general policy of ours. Okay. So no confirmation, but uh, those are the reports out there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for joining us live. Russell Wolf, Executive Vice President, Managing Director of ESPN International. And I'm sure you've just gotten the attention of trading floors across Europe right now with that football video.